Let's talk about Nissan Diesel, also known as UD Trucks. I'm going to show you their data link connector locations. However, we noticed that some users struggle in finding the data link connector locations for Japanese commercial trucks. This is 2005 Nissan Diesel Q1 model. I'm going to show you actual data link connector locations for this model. However, please note that these connector locations might not be the same for other UD models. DLC could be in different locations. You can look up UD service manual for connector locations or other source. If you still cannot find the location, you can ask us at Tech Q&A page of our G-Scan website. We have found the location of DLC and let's try to connect the G-Skin. Select Diagnosis in the main page. You can see a bunch of different car brands. If you look at left, you can see five categories. All regions, you can see all brands in one page. Europe for European brands and Asia for Asian brands and United States for US brands. If you hit alphabet at the bottom left corner, brands will be organized in alphabetical order. If you select a sell order, brands will be organized in order which shows recently used brands. Since we are focusing on UD commercial trucks, let's select Asia. Let's look at UD. Select UD. You will see different models. Select models you want to diagnose. In case of diagnosing Condor, if you get confused whether your Condor is a small or medium size, please note that the size of Japanese trucks is separated by gross vehicle weight. For example, in Japan, light duty truck is in between 2 to 3 tons. Medium duty truck is in between 5 to 8 tons. And heavy duty truck weighs more than 8 tons. If your Condor weighs in between 2 to 3 tons, choose Condor small size. If your Condor weighs in between 5 to 8 tons, choose Condor medium size. Let's select Condor small size and select vehicle model codes. Letters before dash is a code related to emission regulation and letters and numbers after the dash is a vehicle's specific model code. Select the model codes and engine type and you can see the vehicle model year if you want to diagnose certain system, you can directly select system and start to communicate. However, if you want to scan all possible supported functions for each system, you can select a system search at the top. Let's select system search. It might take a couple minutes while G-Scan is communicating with all systems. If you see this star sign, it means advanced function is supported and you can check by selecting it. And you can hit start list. As you can see, these are supported special functions. When you select and select start, you can access to the desired system. 
Let's see what this 2005 Nissan Diesel Q1 model has any DTC. Select DTC analysis. Well, it shows three DTCs. Boost to pressure, boost to pressure sensor reference voltage, vehicle speed sensors. If you look at right state column, it says history. This means ECU detected a problem and then it saved the DTC. If the state column is empty, that means the problem is present. Let's try to erase the codes. Without physical inspection of removing or getting into the parts, you can check the condition of the sensors or compare the value and make a judgment. Let's go to data analysis to check some live data. Let's select it details for a better view. You can see many other different live data. It has 60 items such as engine speed, fuel injection quantity, common rail pressure, air intake, boost to pressure, VNT, EGR, opening, and so on. This data analysis menu is very useful when you want to check or compare such systems. Uh, let's select engine speed, fuel injection quantity, and common rail pressure. Select item. Let's put it into graph mode. Now I'm going to press the accelerator pedal and let's see how it shows. If you look at the bottom, if you want to reset the minimum and max, maximum scale, you can press the reset min max. And if you want to set the auto scale, you can press the auto scale. And you can compare the systems and check the live data. Depending on engine types, number of supported actuation tests is different. Check if it's supported and you can try to test the defective parts for its operation. G-Scan will command the ECU to actuate selected parts. During the test, you can actually hear the sound or visually check the movement of the parts. Let me show you an example. This 2005 UD Q1 model does not show actuation test function because for some models we've put uh, actuation test functions into special functions. So keep that in mind if you don't do not see actuation test function. You can just go to special function and find for actuation test. For example, fuel injection test. By using actuation test function, you do not have to remove the parts or manually test the defective parts to check its operation. Now when you're done with preliminary checks and still the problem exists, you might do some extra visual inspection. After all checks and defective part is confirmed, you would make a decision, replacing or fixing. From mid-2000s, Almost all vehicles are equipped with a bunch of electronics such as computer modules, solenoids, and sensors. For the purpose of achieving advanced comfort or outstanding performance, engine computer units started to save or learn data from the operator's driving habits. Inevitably, the importance of computer control has been increasing. 
Whenever you perform repairs on most recent systems, even simple replacement of sensors, you must use a scan tool to reset or erase learned data in ECU. Other than erasing and learning function, there's calibration, initialization, reset and coding functions. One out of many different examples will be injectors. When you replace injectors, you have to code or write specific injectors ID code into ECU for correct fuel quantity adjustment. Let's see some special functions on UD trucks. Injector ID code check. Well, this function is used when you want to check the each cylinder's injector's ID code. As you can see, each cylinder's injector's ID codes are displayed. When you're done, press OK. Injector ID code registration. This function enables you register or write injector ID code when replacing injector or ECU. You have to set ignition on and engine stop. When you're ready, press OK. As you can see, these are each cylinder's injector's code already registered in ECU. If you replaced cylinder 1 injector, you can press F1. And now you can input injector's ID code. The amount of digits would be 30 digits. When you're ready, press OK and then it will be finished. Fuel injection stop test. This function performs fuel injection stop. Check the following conditions. You have to stop in a safety place. Pull the parking brake and put the shift lever in neutral with engine running at idle. Warm up the engine until the coolant temperature is greater than 65 degrees Celsius or 149 Fahrenheit. Release the foot from the accelerator pedal. Turn off the exhaust brake switch and the engine warm-up switch. When you're ready, press OK. Now you can see engine speed, accelerator sensor open position, engine coolant temperature, and the current status. Let's press OK to start. When pressing down the accelerator by more than 50%, the test starts automatically. Keep pressing the pedal. Please check the result, which will be displayed once the test is finished. I'm pressing the pedal. Now the test has begun. It's checking cylinder number one. And number two. And number three next. And number four. Number five. And number six. Test has been completed successfully. You can release the accelerator pedal now. You can see all the cylinder stop time results. And if you look at the bottom, it says cylinder stop time lag is up to 100,000 microsecond. And the cylinder which indicates the short stop time interval is failure. This means 
if any of the cylinder stop time is 100,000 microseconds less than the average of these results, that cylinder must be in bad condition. And when you're done, you can press OK. Running Excel Sensor Adjust Adjust the accelerator pedal stopper, turnbuckle, and kick damper if it's available. To maintain the running axle sensor voltage within the standard range, this function can be executed under ignition on and engine stop conditions. Please check the vehicle's condition. When you're ready, press next. Please read carefully the instructions. Release the accelerator pedal. If the axle sensor voltage is out of the standard range, adjust the length of the turnbuckle that links the axle sensor and the accelerator pedal to keep the voltage within the range. Step on the accelerator pedal. If the axle sensor voltage is out of the standard range, Adjust the position of the accelerator pedal stopper behind the pedal to keep the voltage within the range. For kick damper, if it's available, step on the accelerator pedal until the value reaches the standard range. If the value is out of the range, adjust the position of the kick damper to keep within the range. If the voltage remains out of the standard range even after the adjustment, the axle sensor needs a replacement. When you're done reading, press next. Now you can see some values of the uh, axle sensor. Press the accelerator pedal and you will see the value is changing. If you look at the bottom, it says standard range. In idling position, the voltage should be in between 0.7 to 1 point of volt. Now the pedal is in idling position. The current value stays within the standard range. In full throttle position, the voltage must be in between 3.9 and 4.1 volt. And the axle position is in full throttle position. The current value is in between the standard range. This model doesn't have the kick damper, so it doesn't show the kick damper item and the value. When you're done, press OK. Turn the ignition key off for more than 10 seconds and then turn the ignition key on and then you're done. PTO axle sensor adjust. Adjust the accelerator pedal stopper, turnbuckle, and kick damper if it's available to maintain the PTO axle sensor voltage within the standard range. This function can be executed under ignition on and engine stop conditions. Please check the vehicle condition. When you're ready, press next. Here are some instructions. First, turn the PTO on and ad adjust the PTO sensor to zero. If the PTO sensor voltage is out of the standard range, adjust the length of the PTO axle sensor's lever stopper bolt to keep the voltage within the range and step on the PTO accelerator. If the voltage is out of the standard range, adjust the length of the PTO axle sensor's lever stopper bolt to keep the voltage within the range. If the voltage remains out of the standard range, even after the adjustment, the axle sensor needs replacement. When you're ready, press next. Here you can see PTO sensor voltage and current values, PTO sensor position, and also the current value. If you look at the bottom, 
here it says standard range. When you let the pedal in idling position, the voltage must be in between 0.5 to 0.7 volts. If it's in full throttle position, it has to be in between 4.0 to 4.2 volts. When it's out of adjustment, you need to perform the adjustment accordingly. When you're done, press OK. And turn the ignition key off for more than 10 seconds and then turn the ignition key on. And then you're done. I hope you gained a good information on Japanese commercial trucks. Thanks for watching this video.